Father in heaven, we thank you for this another Sabbath day. Thank you for the wonderful light that you gave in. Thank you for your protection in the whole week. We ask you, Lord, to come and be with us this Sabbath day. We ask for the guidance of the Holy Spirit to help us, especially the speaker, Pastor Craig, to guide us on how to be humble and fight the enemy. This teach us, Lord, to convert the enemy. We ask for the protection of the holy angels to watch us safe until sunset. Father in heaven, please forgive us our sins, heal our sickness, and this all I pray for our mighty beloved Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Good and happy Sabbath blessings to each and every one of you. I pray that you guys are all having a wonderful Sabbath as I am way out here in the deserts of uh, Arizona where it's a very uh, beautiful day out. Beautiful sun, beautiful firmament, nice and blue, no chemtrails or anything, and it's like a cool uh, 60 degrees. And so, this Sabbath day, I pray that you guys are continuing to press forward, continuing to march onward like Christian soldiers, and that you're constantly being encouraged by the Word of God. Because when you study the Word of God, God teaches us, you know, to be good warriors. He teaches our hands to war. And if you take a look at 2 Samuel, uh, you know, chapter 22, verse 35, it reads, he teacheth my hands to war, so that a bow of steel is broken by mine arms. And so while we're in this battle, you know, this battle of Armageddon that continues 
to press forward and to go onward throughout every single generation where it began in heaven and it will end when probation closes and all cases have been decided for eternal life or for eternal death and separation from God. And today we're making the choices in this battle if we're going to yield to the temptations and sin against God and join ourselves to these idols in the world that separate us from God, that have no business to you know, be in our life where we've been educated by the world that it's okay to do certain things that we have been discussing and talking about and yoking up you know, with this world, but yet we're supposed to come out to her, my people, and be not partakers of her sins, and then you will receive not of her plagues. But if we're going to continue to throw down our armor, to pick up the armor of the enemy, to pick up his sword, and to turn ourselves over to the dark side, and, and, and to do the things of evil, and to attack our brethren that are walking in the truth, that's not good. That is a big, big no-no. Because what you're doing to God's people, you're doing it to God. And you will answer for it if you're going to do these things. That's why it's so crucial in these end times to constantly look to God. To constantly fight the enemy. To constantly uplift our Savior. To trust in Him. Like it says in 2 Samuel chapter 22, verse 3. The God of my rock, in him will I trust. He is my shield and the horn of my salvation, my high tower and my refuge, my savior. Thou savest me from violence. When we war against this system, when we war against Satan, when we war against those who are seeking to destroy the truth, we're going to feel it. This world is going to hate us. We're not going to sit here in this world and be a friend of the world or we're an enemy of God. As Christian soldiers, as biblical you know, uh, Christians who are fighting and striving, contending for the faith and being encouraged by what they read and trusting in God, we have nothing to worry about. Life is but a vapor. These short trials and tribulations and temptations and us crying and hurting and falling down and being devoured by the lion the enemy you know satan we got to trust in god get in his word understand that the majority of this world is not going to like us the majority of this world is going to turn on us there's always going to be a flood and a storm coming in the distance but god's word teaches you that no matter ten thousands fall at your right side no matter Ten thousands fall at your left side or behind you or in front of you. You're constantly looking up because God's right there. He's always been right there. He's not billions and billions of miles away like a lot of these Christian professed churches proclaim. The earth is his footstool. Think about that. How far is he? Think about the reality and just how much this world has been deceived through this educational system to believe that our God is so far away it's almost like he doesn't exist don't fall for the trickery that we see today you've got to constantly war against this system and the lies that have been coming out of these churches um, these professed Christians these institutions of Rome NASA all these things that are trying to deter you away from the truth to not even believe what your real home looks like or what it is or how it was built by our Creator that loves you so much that He's wanting to give you the absolute truth of everything and if we would just you know constantly trust in Him we have nothing to worry about His light His Bible His King James Bible is a light to our path and it will light it up so that when the absolute truth comes to you you will receive it with joy. You won't be offended. You won't turn against, you know, the church of God. You won't turn uh, against God's people and accuse them. You will repent from the ways that you thought were right. But the light has come and you turn away from the old man. Constantly die daily. 
Constantly examine self to make sure you're found in the faith. Continue to press onward like Christian soldiers. And God will help you. Stick with His Word. His Word is the King James Bible. Do not go off into these other teachings and these, you know, soothsayers and pronosticators and and uh, these professors and all these people in this world that go through the educational system and end up being deceived and deceiving others. So stick to the Word of God. Just as 2 Samuel chapter 22 verse 22 proclaims, brethren, For I have kept the ways of the Lord and have not wickedly departed from my God. And while we stick to the biblical truth, we're going to understand that by sticking to the biblical truth, we're going to be built like the earth was on a strong foundation held up by the pillars of truth. Just like his creation, just like his creatures. Symbolically, literally, everything will come together and understand that God's truth is the light that will keep you on the straight and narrow path on the straight and narrow plane and no matter how many mountains that may form through the thundering efforts of satan and no matter how much air he spews out in this world no matter how much he tempts you or or gets you to fall into sin you get back up trusting god keep reading the word of god and love 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 true biblical love is obedience to him and your obedience to him first will help you understand the path of righteousness and will help you walk with your brethren in peace in harmony because it is a beautiful thing to dwell with your brethren in harmony and nothing will get in your path nothing will get in your way and so we got to learn to love our enemies as Romans chapter 12 proclaims Dearly beloved, avenge not yourselves, but rather give place unto wrath. For it is written, Vengeance is mine, I will repay, saith the Lord. Therefore, if thine enemy hunger, feed him. If he thirst, give him drink. For in so doing, thou shalt heap coals of fire on his head. Be not overcome of evil but overcome evil with good. When we love our enemies, that does not mean that you can go off with them with that spirit of unity with everyone and everything. Loving them is giving them the truth, and when they err and reject the ways of truth, you walk away and shake off the dust of your feet like Matthew chapter 10 proclaims. When you shake off the dust of your feet, you continue to march onward like a Christian soldier, leaving a love for those people that have rejected the truth by not attacking them, not attacking them personally, fighting with the sword of the spirit and presenting the truth, presenting it in a loving manner, not attacking them no matter what. If you see your enemy being destroyed by somebody else, that is not good. You do not make personal thrusts, personal attacks, exposing them out in the open. Jesus taught us how to deal with those who are in sin. Just as you would want to be treated with your secret sins and whatever's going on in your life. God has spent ages working with you with the things that if other people knew that you were doing, they would probably be so offended and so disgusted, they would kick you to the curb, throw you out from among their house and their family, and, and, and just get you out of there. That's not how Christ says to deal with people. And, and I see this happen all the time, like in our former church, and then my former church before that, and then my former church before that, where there's always people gossiping, backbiting, fault finding, looking for ways to destroy people. And me personally, when I would see people crying and hurting and sitting at their locker, 
you know, in tears because, you know, their best friend had said something and did something to them. And I didn't like that. And if they did something wrong, I still went to go talk to them and comfort them and, 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 and help educate them in what they should do and whatnot. And then I would also go talk to the person who would sit there and do that to them, regardless if they feel that they deserved it. Because the way of the heathen, they teach you how to just bash and beat up people left and right. And God's kingdom does not permit that. God's biblical people are not going to engage in such things. We will go to war. We will not compromise and we will go to war. But that war is doctrinally. We fight for the truth. We don't fight to personally destroy our enemies. And as biblical remnant Christians in this 11th hour movement where we're hoping to be translated a lot of us without tasting death and being a part of that special number that 144,000 or make it in, into heaven through death we will not go off and personally hurt others it's like a lot of you had family members who proclaim to be Christians but yet they will spit on you they will kick you out of the smallest things. They will yell at you. They will hate you. They will say, get out of my face. I want my peace. That kind of stuff. And I've seen it so many times. There's nothing new under the sun, folks. This is why we can know them by their fruits. Because of what they are performing in their lives in this earth. And this is why we don't want to be like that. We want to be good fighters good Christian soldiers for the Lord Jesus Christ. And we can't do that. We can't represent Christ when we're acting like our enemies who have devoured people left and right to the point I've seen them like in our former church where these families would actually have to go seek a family counselor because they were so destroyed by the minister and the work and the workers that follow him it's horrible to see that kind of stuff and it's it's not what we need to be engaging in as Christians so no matter what if you see people hurting help them don't hurt them we want to increase and help God's kingdom grow not destroy it because that's not how Christ taught us to treat people to treat our enemies okay and so I just pray and hope that as we draw closer each and every day, each and every hour to the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, that we are preparing, we are preparing, and we are preparing. And we can't prepare for heaven if we're doing the works of the enemy, if we're picking up their sword of unrighteousness and killing and devouring people that are striving so hard to make it into the kingdom of God. And so I leave this with you, brethren. Please, every day of your life, when you wake up, pray, listen to the word of God, read the word of God, let it penetrate your heart. Just open up the scriptures and let it speak to you and spend time with your Lord in listening to his word and the Holy Spirit will help you understand the Son of God and the words that he has left for us in his King James Bible and by knowing your Savior you will understand the Father Abba who loves you so much and he is just right there above the firmament he is right there looking at us knowing everything that's going on his footstool is here. His feet are right above us where he has planted his truth and is ready to stomp out this nasty, nasty educational system that Satan has set up to deceive people. And one day it's going to be over with. And the heavens are going to depart like a scroll and the wicked are going to see his face appear and they're going to hide in the dens in the rocks and we want to make sure we're not a part of that by giving everything that we have for our savior 
in understanding his biblical truth will help us become those beautiful Christian soldiers who have been taught by God to war with their hands and to devour the enemy through the sword of truth. And with the Spirit of God and teaching us to be like Christ, we'll we'll, we will also represent the Father in heaven and the three most highest powers, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit that are working together in our behalf with the angels who come down here to help us and protect us and walk as our Savior. And so, brethren, until next time, please, please learn to absolutely love everyone you possibly can biblically. Do not compromise with this world through using the terminology love because it can be a deception. Love does not mean you compromise the truth and the principles of God to join in with your enemies. That is not love. That is deceit. Hiding under the guise of love. It's not truth. Love is worshiping Him, obeying Him, and applying His Ten Commandments in your life and doing everything you can to help others see the truth. Never, brethren, turn on your family, in the church, your brothers and your sisters, your mothers and your father, your dads, or, or anyone on this planet. Do not turn on them and attacking them personally. Love by presenting the truth and letting it soak into their minds and their hearts. And hopefully you will convert somebody and it will be a star on your crown in heaven as a reward for the diligent work that you have done on this earth to help people see the light of truth and and hopefully that they you know will make it to heaven so until next time brethren again please keep striving and contending and do not do like our enemy where they profess to love but yet they go around doing horrible things to others ignoring them blocking them casting them away throwing them down kicking them to the curb speaking evil against them and joining in with our enemies who have been unrepentant and not even thinking twice about turning to the lord jesus christ and performing the good christian fruits that he offers to all of us through his ten commandments god bless you all continue to contend and i'll see you next time and i love you amen Abba Father, we come before your throne in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, and with the Holy Spirit. Lord, thank you for that wonderful message that you have given us. May it all um, sink into our hearts and into our minds, and may you help us, may you help us apply them into our lives and become a good Christian soldier. And um, Lord, help us to live according to your purpose and will, even if the world will hate us. Help us to endure until the end. Help us overcome all our weaknesses. Help us to obey, obey your two great commandments. And and that is to love you supremely and to love our neighbor as, our, as ourselves. And peace be with all your saints around the world. And may this, and may this uh, message will be a blessing for each and every one of us. And may you always guide us as we continue to walk in this narrow past and we know that you have taught us how to fight as a good Christian soldier but Lord apart from you um, we know that we can do nothing we all need you we all need your help so please be with your saints your children around the world especially those who are persecuted May you help them and to forgive us from all of our sins and thoughts and words and deeds.
We love you, we serve you, we worship you on the Sabbath day. And all this I ask and pray and give thanks in the powerful name of our Lord and King and Savior, Jesus Christ, and with the help of the Holy Spirit. To you, Abba. Amen.